Hello and welcome everyone, I am Maddles and welcome to another StarCraft 2 England cast. Today guys, I have just got a ladder game, it is from two grey players though. The Protoss player, let me introduce them first, the red Protoss in the lower left is of course Dignitas' dream. He is going to be up against Proxy, the blue Terran player, in the top right and well, that means that it is a PvT and that is a great matchup, it is super good fun to watch and the map is Cloud Kingdom so it's actually quite a cool map, I like this map just because of the fact that it's quite big, it's quite wide as well, and there's different attack paths, there's lots of different options of ways to go into different bases, and it's it's pretty fun. I like it, I think it's going to be good. Now, what, let's talk about strategy, what can these two players go for? Well, there's lots and lots of different options. For a start, we can see anything from a 1-1-1 from the Terran player, we could see a 3-gate Blinkstalker build out of the Protoss, we could see fast expansions from both, is really quite viable, or it can go all the way down to lots and lots of different things, um, just so complete macro games. Generally though, if we do see longer games, you tend to see some similar kind of strategies, unless of course the Terran is going for some kind of timing push, it's nearly always going to be Marine Marauder Medivac, it's just very very strong, and the reason it's so strong is once you get Stim out, it wrecks gateway units, and then it's really up to the Protoss to get a good balance of Colossi and High Templar with Storm in order to deal with that, but the downside of course is the Terran can make Vikings and Ghosts, and that really really shuts down Colossi and High Templar, so we'll wait and see exactly what's done. In terms of the end game composition for Protoss, Protoss, generally you're looking for around, you, well generally you tend to actually see Protoss players go for the Colossus first, get about 3 out and then switch into the High Templar just because High Templar with Storm deal great damage but Storms don't stack which means that they kind of hit and then the Terran units can obviously move, you can try and get more down but they do burst damage whereas Colossi they can do sustained damage which is very very important in picking off units and that's quite often where you see lower level Zerg players for example struggle with Infestors because they see pros being oh so awesome with Infestors and Fungal Growth etc and then they just come in and they're just a bit like well I'll just make loads of Infestors and then suddenly their entire army dies and they're like um, what happened? And it's just because they expect Vungal Growth to do all of the work for them and it, it's a great spell but it doesn't do everything and just in the same way High Templars with Storm can't do all of the work either so we'll wait and see exactly what composition goes for. For the time being though this is looking pretty normal I mean we do have the Cyber Core coming out, we've got the One Gas for the Protoss meanwhile up at the Terran base it's a One Rax Command Center which is a really viable opening it lets you get a couple of Marines out early, it's a bit more defensive, you can chuck a bunker down two, three if you feel really, really threatened, but it looks like Dream is just going to go for his own expansion, so it was just a one gate expansion, which again is really, really nice play by both these guys, they're both going for the more macro orientated play, no type of timing pushes or anything like that, and I think that's actually the better move on a ladder game, because obviously if you're in a best of three or best of five, etc, you can you can do pretty good with timing pushes and catch your opponent off guard, but generally speaking on the ladder, if you lose a game because of a timing push, you don't get a second chance, you don't get a comeback match, you don't get a level the series out game, you just lose and as a result you're better off just trying to play much more standard and get a good overall game sense as opposed to going for something cheap. Now, Proxy going for really the macro orientated build, a one rack into a command center, into a third command center, so this is really as economical as you could possibly go as Terran. Um, the problem is Dream, he's going to be in an okay spot, if he puts on some pressure he's going to be in an amazing spot because Proxy is going to really struggle to hold, he's got two more barracks following this up, no gas yet at all, so this is a good follow up, usually even if you just go one rack to command center, Terran players against Protoss usually follow that up with two racks, if you were against Zerg you'd follow it up with two gas and then usually a factory into a starport, but obviously the marines are great against gateway units, especially when you start chucking down more bunkers, you can then get out two tech labs in order to get things like combat shield, concussive shell and stim, also start the Marauder production, of course they're very very potent against Stalkers, so something you always want to get into your composition. Now we've got a grand total of two more gateways coming down, as well as the robotics facility, so both players taking up really nicely here, everything going quite where they want, and I'm sorry for that little screen flick. For those of you who watch my channel, you will know that my lovely Mad Cat's Rat 9 mouse 
died at the beginning of last week and while it's gone back and the tech support have been amazing and are just replacing it no questions asked the downside is that obviously I'm having to use a £10 cheap little thing in the meantime which just randomly just is like oh my mouse is in the middle of the screen I guess I'll just go and scroll like diagonally and left because I can but anyway we've got this stalker coming forward and backwards I should get my new mouse in the next couple of days by the way guys so Hope, uh, hoping that it will be back in time for insomnia but we will wait and see but looking here obviously that stalker poking prodding we've got really a lot of marines and the stalker doesn't need to be careful if it gets trapped by those marines it could run into some problems the double tech lab uh, well the single tech lab the double reactor on their way down stem on its way the double engineering base so a really upgrade have the build out of proxy for the Protoss player, well, the Observer's out. Meanwhile, we've got just the three warp gates warping in units. And that's all good. He's got all four gas up, so it looks like it's going to be a really, really tech-heavy play. There goes down the robotic space. They're going straight up to Colossus. And, well, for the Terran, any sign of teching up towards Vikings? The answer is no. Um, that doesn't actually matter quite yet. There's a real critical point. It's usually at the three Colossus point, or Colossi point, that you start having to think about Vikings. Before then... If there's just one and maybe two, then infantry with stim are fine. You just stim forward and focus fire down the Colossus and you're just like, yeah, bang, everything's good. After three, they just deal too much damage. You can't focus them down quickly enough to avoid dying before to everything else. So that is really the opportunity window Proxy does have. That third orbiter command, though, really going to be helping. It does get scouted, though, by that observer. Of course, you can see here that the work count near equal, even when you factor in chrono boosts. And, of course, when you factor in mules, that does put Proxy ahead in terms of the income going to be slightly behind in the gas just due to the fact he's only got three out but he doesn't have a huge need for it getting that factory out now that's just starting the tech path up towards the starports of course no medevacs out at all yet obviously and as a result without the medevacs if colossus are rushed out then you've got the issue of well hang on what do I do to deal with that? Then I'm going to have to get the Vikings out. Do you skip the medevac production? Do you just get more starports out? Either way, you've got to make a sacrifice. And really, the more sacrifices you force your opponent to make, the more likely you are to win. Looking here, the third base obviously coming out here for Dream. That's good. The timing's nice. The probe just chilling there at the third base of Proxy, being like, Hey, when are you going to take it, bro? Looking up here, obviously, the reactor coming down in the factory. That's going to get switched to the starport team. or barracks getting added on. We also have the armory for the 2-2 upgrades to start. These marines already, well, will very shortly be 1-1. The 1-1 upgrades on the way out for Protoss as well. Not getting chrono boosted yet, so we should see that come up shortly. Meanwhile, we've got three more gateways being added on as well as the third, well, the third base half done for Dream. And, yeah, we've got a small infantry push coming along. Only three marauders in there, so very, very marine heavy. We've got the SCVs transferring over it looks like we're gonna have that orbital command land may have to pull back some units to deal with the probe or perhaps the SCVs themselves will just go and pick it off we'll wait and see but obviously proxy he is keeping an eye out and the probe not actually Force, not actually stopping the land, so that of course would have loved to have been in a slightly better position. The first Colossus is out. We do have a Twilight Counter coming down as well because the 1 1 upgrades for Protoss are about to be finished, and of course they're absolutely essential. We've got just the one Marine there. The Colossus now being shown as well. The first two Medivacs only just coming out onto the field now, though, so will we see the Viking production style right away? We will wait and see, but obviously two tech lags coming down in the barracks, so more Marauder production is going to be on the route. In terms of the teching charge on the way down for Dream, we've got the 2 2 upgrades as well as Combat Shield coming down for the Terran player. And, well, both players being incredibly passive at the moment. I mean, they've both lost, well, a handful of resources, which at over 10 minutes into the game is really quite low. And obviously, when we start thinking about, hang on, we're now getting really into the late game. In terms of the Protoss tech, well, Colossus is already out. We're already getting charge up. We're getting the 2 2 upgrades. This is definitely mid to late game. And. When you look at the Terran, well, he's just really hit his stride in the mid-game. So there is tech advantage to Dream, but in total army size, well, a big advantage to Proxy, actually. And if it's a good timing push, it can be very strong. Of course, the Observer will scout out the fact that this infantry is coming across the map. And will he be there to deal with it in time? The scan goes down. The two Colossi are out. We are seeing an Immortal follow this up. The Templar Archive's coming down as well. So Dream only getting up to two Colossi and then just going straight into the HTs with Storm. And, well, as you can see, Proxy, he's just doing a nice job of getting up a a lot of income. He's 20, 78 rather SCVs to the 63 probes. And of course, when we look at how that affects the income, well, obviously Proxy in a great spot at the moment, starting his Viking production now. 
the first two Vikings just on their way out. Still only the one starport though, as far as I can see. Oh no, the second one just completing up there with the reactor on it. So should see four Vikings at a time. But of course the concern for the Terran player is, well, what if he goes for just too many Vikings? And of course, you don't want a huge number of Vikings against only two Colossi. And this is the other important thing about Protoss players teching two High Templar out of Colossi is because if you get too many up, the Terran player is just like, hey, I'm gonna build lots of Vikings, herp to herp, I win. But obviously if you keep the numbers lower, they become a threat, but if it, obviously the Terran is then like, well, if I don't build enough Vikings, I don't kill them quickly enough. But if I build too many, then so much of my supply is wasted on the unit that is effectively useless once they're dead. And all of these things are considerations is why I actually love PVT, because you get these really good army composition questions about how many of X do I build to counter Y, and that can cause a lot of very interesting interactions between the two armies but talking of army interactions we should see one very imminently with proxy coming across with pretty much all of his army right now and well dream he's not looking to be in a great position he's got the two colossi up he's got two archons up and of course they will help the ghosts aren't out yet of course if the vikings do stack up then those archons are going to be able to splash damage them and deal huge damage but here we go we've got a bit of an engagement coming in the sentry count exceptionally low only three sentries there the force field is going to be very critical the sentries do all have full energy though so they should be able to get over Okay, but here we go, we've got a bit of engagement coming in, the Vikings do manage to pick up the first Colossus very, very quickly, the second one getting focused down as well, and the Vikings not being stopped at all, both Colossi go down, and of course now Proxy in an amazing spot, a good 60 supply ahead already, and well, this is becoming a huge, huge problem for Dream, as you can see here, the Vikings even land to come and engage into this fight, and well, as you can see, this is such a one-sided engagement. The third base for the Protoss player getting taken down exceptionally quickly. And Dream now in full retreat, trying to get back. He's got, a, well, one Colossus in production. 12, now up to 16 Zealots. The one Immortal and the one Sentry against 43 Marines, 11 Marauders, 7 Medivacs and 8 Vikings. This force is absolutely devastating and Proxy in a brilliant timing move there. Dream may be overcommitted to the tech. Is he going to be able to hold? I suspect the answer will be no as his Zealots are falling so quickly and Dream GG's out. And that was an absolutely amazing play by Proxy there. And to be honest... Dream, he maybe just went a bit too economically focused with the third base, bit too risky with just teching up quite so quickly, stopping on just the two Colossi rather than getting up to three, maybe four. But either way, an amazing game to watch, and I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. And, well, what would what can you do now? Subscribe, because I get new games up daily. Like the video if you enjoyed it. Leave a cool comment. But most importantly, I hope you all enjoyed it, and I'll see you tomorrow for yet another new cast. Or if you can't wait that long, of course, flick over to my channel and give some old casts to watch. Anyway, thanks for watching, and bye for now.